Hello everyone! Welcome to Grade 10 Science Lesson. I hope you're staying healthy while having a productive day. Our topic is about biodiversity and stability. At the end of the lesson, you are expected to explain how species diversity increases the probability of adaptation and survival of organisms in changing environments. Let's get started! In Module 6, you have learned how evolution through natural selection can result in biodiversity. In this module, you will learn how biodiversity can influence the stability of an ecosystem. Biodiversity describes how varied their life forms in different ecosystems. Learners, which area has high biodiversity? Rainforest or rice field? Correct! It is rainforest. Always remember that an ecosystem with high biodiversity has various species of organisms while an ecosystem with low biodiversity does not have various species of organisms. Learners, kindly classify the following into low or high biodiversity. First, we have cattle farm. Correct! Low biodiversity. Next, ocean. High biodiversity, that's right! And for the last one, we have cornfield. Low biodiversity. Tama ang iyong kasalutan. Ngayon na nalaman mo na ang pagkakaiba ng low at high biodiversity, tandaan na ang mga organismo ay bahagi ng biodiversity at maaaring economically and ecologically valuable. Their products are source of food, medicine, clothing, and shelter. Ang mga organismong ito ay mahalaga upang mapanatiling balanse ang ecosystem habang ginagampanan nila ang kanilang tungkulin. Let us study the value of species and its categories. Pag sinabing value, halaga. Sana all may halaga. Number one, direct economic value. Species are sources of the basic needs of humans such as food, clothing, shelter, medicine, and energy. Halimbawa, rice plant. Ito ang pangunahing pagkain ng mga Pilipino o tinatawag na staple food. Next is cotton. Ginagawa naman itong damit. The third one is lagundi. Familiar na kayo dito. Ito yung ginagawang gamot sa ubo. And finally, ang rosy periwinkle or tinatawag sa Tagalog na chichirika. Ayon sa pag-aaral, tinatawag ito na life-saving plant. Rosy periwinkle is a valuable medicine but it is also extremely poisonous. Next is indirect economic value. A species has an indirect economic value if there are benefits produced by the organism without using them. Nandyan siya pero minsan hindi mo nakikita ang halaga. Ito ang mga organismo na hindi natin i-utilize or ginagamit 
Ngunit mahalaga ang ginagampanan sa ating environment. Example, planting trees to reduce flood, prevent landslide, and soil erosion. It also absorbs carbon dioxide in the air, which is essential for photosynthesis. And for the last one, we have aesthetic value. Let of species provides visual or artistic enjoyment. Halimbawa natin dito ay ang forested landscape, natural park, o kaya prayer mountains na ginagawang lugar for spiritual meditation. At yan ang various categories ng value of species. Why biodiversity is very important? Hmm. It is because it sustains through flow of energy, the food web on earth, and contributes to environmental stability. What is stability? The resilience to withstand changes that may occur in the environment. Always remember that greater diversity is tantamount or equal to greater stability. O kapag mataas ang biodiversity, mataas din ang stability o ang katatagan ng ecosystem na mapaglabanan ang mga pagbabagong nangyayari sa ating kapaligiran. Wow! Let us focus on the ups and downs of population growth. Ano nga ba ang population? Hmm. It is a group of organisms of the same species that live in a certain area. Halimbawa natin ay ang sea otter, clownfish, zebra, and coconut plantation. Same species sila in a particular area. Wow! Are you familiar with ecologists? Ecologists are expert in ecology. Ecology is the study of organisms with respect to their dwelling place. Sila ang nagmomonitor ng bilang ng organismo sa isang population, pero bakit kaya nila ito ginagawa? Bakit dapat nating pangalagaan kung ang bilang ng mga organismo sa isang lugar ay bumababa o tumataas? Why is a population size increasing or decreasing? Populations that are growing or diminishing can be indicators of potential problems in the organism's environment. At ang ganitong kondisyon ay nakakaalarma sa mga ecologists dahil posibleng may mali na nangyayari sa kapaligiran. Maraming factors kung bakit nagbabago ang size ng population. Any population, whether it be that of humans, animals, the mold growing on bread, or the bacteria living in your intestine will grow if more organisms are being developed or born than are dying. Birth rate or natality refers to the number of births in a population while death rate or mortality is the number of organisms that are dying in a population. Thus, if the birth rate is greater than the death rate, a population will grow. If the death rate is greater than the birth rate, then the population will decrease. What is population density? It refers to the number of organisms per unit area. If a population density is very high, that means there are many organisms crowded into a certain area. At kapag mababa naman ang population density, ibig sabihin, kaunting organismo lamang ang nakatira o naninirahan sa isang particular na area. At yan ang population density. What is 
limiting factor, hmm. it stops a population from continuously growing larger. Pinipigilan nito ang pagdami ng populasyon ng organismo. A population's growth is limited by two general factors. The density-independent limiting factors and the density-dependent limiting factors. Under the density-independent limiting factors are the natural disasters such as floods, earthquakes, and fires. It will definitely stop a population from growing no matter how many organisms are living in a certain area. Same goes with the amount of sunlight it received and the temperature of an area. Kapag mataas ang temperatura dahil sa global warming, it will definitely cause decrease in a population's number. Last is the human activities. It will also decrease the number of organisms in a population. We will focus on the carrying capacity. It is the maximum number of organisms that an environment can support. Kapag ang population ay dumami at naabot na ang bilang na kayang suportahan ng environment at wala ng pagkukunan ng pagkain, tirahan at tubig, it will cause a population to stop growing. Na-reach na niya ang carrying capacity. At iyan ang limiting factors. Before a population reaches carrying capacity, it experiences a period of rapid growth. This period of growth is called exponential population growth. Sa period na ito ay maraming resources para sa mga organismo. Dahil dito, mas marami ang ipinapanganak kesa namamatay na organismo. Sa image, makikita ninyo na dahil unlimited ang resources ng pagkain, ng tirahan at ng tubig, ang exponential growth ay J-shaped curve. Kapag limited na ang resources dahil nga naabot na niya ang carrying capacity, it exhibit logistic growth. The logistic growth results in S-shaped curve. At iyan ang exponential growth at logistic growth. Limiting factors that depend on population density. Number one is diseases and parasites. Infectious diseases and parasites spread faster in densely populated areas. Mas mabilis ang paggalat ng sakit o ang pagkahawa-hawa kung populated ang area. Next is competition. Organisms with better adaptation to obtain resources will be able to reproduce more often. The third one is predation. When plenty of prey are available, predators will be able to eat sufficiently. Thus, they have energy to reproduce much. Last is the emigration. Emigration occurs when population approaches its carrying capacity and individual organisms live and go to a new area where they can find enough resources to survival and reproduction. Nangyayari ang emigration kapag malapit na ma-reach ang carrying capacity at ang individual ay nagnanais ng lumipat sa ibang area kung saan makakakuha siya ng sapat na resources para mag-survive at magparami. At yan ang limiting factors that depend on the population density. Please bear in mind that humans are obliged to take responsibility in maintaining a clean and healthy state of the ecosystem. Aww. That's all for today, learners. Now, kindly get your module and do the learning task. Sana ay marami kayong natutunan ngayong araw. Aww. 
I hope you learned a lot for today's lesson. Enjoy learning because science matters. Good day!